So today I'm going to bring your attention to a very interesting article recently published in Nature Catalysis. So this article is about hydrogen generation with uh, plasmonic bimetallic two-dimensional supercrystals. So if you're working in the field of heterogeneous catalysis, especially, especially for hydrogen generation uh, or any other interesting uh, uh, reactions, uh, it can be a very uh, uh, interesting article. So what they're showing here is um, formic acid dehydrogenation for the production of hydrogen. And as the catalyst, they have used uh, this combination of gold nanoparticles and platinum nanoparticles. So these bigger um, round, nicely round nanoparticles, they are gold nanoparticles and the small ones, they are platinum nanoparticles and they are trapped in the interstitial gaps. So why is this article interesting? It's because um, uh, it's it's a photocatalytic process so light is illuminated um, these nanoparticle films are illuminated um, by light uh, for the enhancement of the hydrogen production and what really happens here is that uh, unlike normal uh, catalytic processes where there is a support and you have uh, nanoparticles uh, on the support here in this case um, these gold nanoparticles are ordered in this hexagonal pattern. So they are really highly ordered arrays of gold nanoparticles and in the interstitial gaps there are platinum nanoparticles. And because of this highly orderedness of these arrays, when they are illuminated, there is an optical enhancement effect. So if you're into plasmonic nanoparticles or, or plasmonics uh, in general, then uh, you know that this is called plasmonic coupling. So basically it's it's like these gold nanoparticles are kind of um, the optical properties the or, or the optical uh, um, behavior of these gold nanoparticles. They are kind of coupling with each other. So they kind of give like a collective uh, optical response together and due to this collective optical response uh, there is a light concentration effect in these uh, interparticle gaps and when the platinum nanoparticles are right there in the interstitial gaps um, then we have this enhancement in the reaction and this is really interesting because this kind of geometrical uh, nanostructures they are now used for um, these kind of really interesting and important applications so maybe in the future um, um, the, the catalysis or the catalytic processes they will emphasize on these kind of uh, nano engineering so uh, personally this is really interesting for me because during my phd i also worked on these kind of um, gold nanoparticle films so that's why i i can also say that these nanoparticle films are also highly reproducible so if you follow uh, a very um, uh, if you follow a robust protocol uh, carefully then uh, it is possible to uh, get these kind of films um, reproducibly also in a quite straightforward way so it does work very well and that's what I also want to emphasize here uh, so I will go to one of my papers um, I published during my PhD so here also I did the same so I synthesized the gold nanoparticles and then so they are here they are the gold nanoparticles and these gold nanoparticles are self-assembled over ethylene glycol and when the gold nanoparticle solvent dries up then you can have this kind of really highly ordered nanoparticles so if you look at the development here so gold nanoparticles are kind of floating over ethylene glycol surface and the nanoparticles are dispersed in toluene and when the toluene is drying up you can see from one side the film is developing the blue color is the film so after a few hours when the entire toluene solvent is um, 
disappears uh, and dries up then we have this blue kind of blue colored film and um, when uh, it is um, characterized with TEM uh, transmission electron microscopy you can see that these nanoparticle films are highly ordered over large uh, long distance and I also did the electromagnetic modeling of these nanoparticles so used an unit cell approach and I have actually shown uh, in my previous videos how to do these kind of modelings and you can find with these kind of modelings uh, modeling you can find the uh, far field properties like transmission reflectance uh, absorptance and everything and also what is the kind of what is the um, light concentration effect what is also called the near field enhancement effect and how strong is it in the interstitial or the inter uh, in nanoparticle gaps so that's something can be in, that can be investigated in a very straightforward way um, so uh, I I would say um, the synthesis of these nanoparticles are very easy. In my case, uh, it's just boiling a sodium trisodium citrate solution and then adding the precursor chlororic acid. And uh, and after t uh, 10 minutes, the solution, the gold nanoparticle solution is ready. The nanoparticles are around 8 to uh, uh, 10 nanometer. And these nanoparticles are first they are produced in water medium so they are in uh, hydrophilic uh, aqueous medium and then they are uh, made hydrophobic by uh, coating them with or grafting them with olelamin which is a hydrophobic ligand and that way the nanoparticles are also transferred to toluene which is a hydrophobic uh, uh, solvent and then they are concentrated by uh, centrifugation steps and then they are self-assembled over an ethylene glycol surface and uh, it's very important to also cover it from the top so that the the evaporation of the toluene is low and that's it it's actually quite straightforward um, so uh, this protocol can be followed uh, from my article uh, I have done it many times and it worked every single time um, uh, and but there are many other uh, um, uh, papers uh, uh, so these kind of protocols can be f found also from the group of uh, professor Christoph B. Murray uh, he is in fact pioneer in the field of um, self-assembly uh, and yeah that, that's what I want to um, to highlight today uh, it's very uh, nice uh, self-assembled nanoparticle films um, and being used in a very unique way because of their you know very uh, extraordinary optical properties uh, I think the modeling part of this work they did it with FDTD so they solved the Maxwell's equations in the time domain but it doesn't matter um, uh, in my case in COMSOL you can do frequency domain analysis so that's also quite uh, simple to do uh, I think yeah they used numerical FDTD solutions but um, yeah, depending on which software you have you can do the analysis if you want to learn about how to do the modeling with this unit cell approach on COMSOL then you can check out my uh, my previous videos um, thank you very much for your attention so see you in the in the next video